Welcome to Listen Next, where we talk to artists about the music they make, the music they love, and the music they think you should listen to next. Today, we talk to Joel and Joff from the British band Wolf Alice about their latest album, Blue Weekend, and some of the music that inspired it, as well as their love for a certain Britpop band from the 90s. There's always been a lot of variety in your music, but it seems to be even more so on this album and you've definitely kind of experimented a bit more did you feel a bit braver at this point in your career that you could try some different things yes to be quite honest with you i think so i think i think you become brave with your choices because you're willing to hold you're willing to hold back at times where you may have felt scared that there wasn't enough going on you're also willing to challenge each other in a creative way you're willing to you know maybe what synth to use rather than spending four days mucking around with them. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just down to experience. And um, we've been, you know, the experience we have with Justin on visions of a life, I found it. So I really felt like we all in the studio of element of Wolf Alice stepped up a gear and we, we had a real event adventure with that record. You know, we did create, we did be recorded in places where like, the fucking beach boy, sorry, I just swore, but like, the beach boys yeah, recorded and things like, <laughs> yeah you know you, you just we were using like fancy mics and gear and things like that and justin was very um encouraging for us to take charge of our own like roles if you know what i mean and then this was the first project where after that we had it so i think there was elements of that confidence in us that you're you may be shy even if it existed on my love is cool you're a bit it's your first one you know and that's the third one we're a bit more okay well let's this is the this is the road we can we can go down today with this and you feel a bit more confident in yourself to do so and i think this is the first time you've used strings on a record is that right mm. and with real this, ones yeah real ones is that something that you <laughs> kind of wanted to do for a long time or did it just feel right at this at this point with this song we talked about it before on previous records we were talking about this yesterday yeah that we came to the conclusion on albums, I think album two that we were, we weren't there yet. We uh, we hadn't earned our stripes to get uh, to get strings. Mm. Yet. Right. I think it might have um, been freezy actually on the first one. Ellie was talking about, wasn't it? You know, it has that stab. Yeah, really. yeah but we're super super lucky to work with. Um, oh god, his name's just Owen Pallet. Owen, Owen Pallet. There we go. Who's um who an Canadian. absolute legend? Yeah, who's an absolute legend, arranger and player. Mm. Um, I think he was a member of was is a member of Arcade Fire um, and did a lot of the stuff with him Mm. with them Uh, obviously Marcus has worked with him before Um, yeah it it was just that was just a a fantastic experience having someone like that involved in the project yeah and when you probably see him walking around mate he's a Montreal lad isn't he yeah he is Montreal yeah. Um, so when you're working with some someone like that that you admire, but they're from outside the fold, do, do you just let them do their thing, or do you have any kind of input in how you want it to do, to be? <clears throat> so we sent over like basically kind of like MIDI versions, so kind of keyboard versions of what we would generally like the strings to be doing. All right. And then he went, and we kind of went, look, here's what we've got so far feel free to embellish, you know, play around with stuff. Um, and then we'll kind of edit as we go, really. And what so kind of turn, you- so go from we go, that was great. Can we just lose this bit or maybe put this bit in here, make this bit more, more pronounced? It was just kind of a really good reciprocal creative relationship. Nice. That's what you want. And what kind of music were you listening to around the time that you were writing these new songs and was any of that music influential on on the final sound of the record? When we first started showing people ideas, I remember I went on holiday and I had like a few playlists and it was really random things like a songwriter called Judy Still and then Nine Inch Nails and BC Boys Records. I became pretty obsessive with Chemical Brothers and a, and a, a record in particular, Surrender, I think is the one with Sunset mm-hmm. Underground and stuff like that. Which me and Joff like share a real bond over that record. And I just became obsessed with the idea of like dance music that sounds like a garage band. And that record does that well, you know? And then when we were, personally for me, when we moved into Brussels, that Heim record ca- came out and it had that song, um, oh, 
there's, I'm, that's Gas- gonna gasoline. Well, to be honest with you, everything they were doing the at that time. Yeah, I think no, it's that I don't Summer know girl. alone. I know, I know okay. alone. Yeah, yeah. It's shocking that I can't remember the name of that. I've been listening to it every day for the last two year and a half, whatever. Oh and it was one of those moments where I watched. It, I was just like, oh, I really, really like this, and it actually did make me. It put questions in my head for what we were working on in terms of their tones and their sounds. And it was just nice to see. You know, I'm not saying we've come up with Heim, but they've. We've. All, I feel like in terms of literally just in terms of years we've been around when they've been around and watching them progress into the kind of writers and musicians that they have been on this re- recent record was super inspiring for me we didn't we didn't run into them unfortunately we haven't been able to run into them for a little while actually Heim. but we are you know we, we've hung out with them a few times and they're just not only are they the most fun people but they just can shred and make incredible pop music out of the music that's come out before the album so at this point we've had the singles they're all very different again when you're planning for an album and kind of giving hints of what the album's about do you always deliberately go for things that are very different to give an overall flavor of the album is that a deliberate technique i think we want to keep people interested and intrigued you know Mm. i mean you know i think we have a lot of different sides to us and it's always kind of it's kind of fun to a certain extent you know yeah. Throwing something out of left field to begin with and seeing what people think. Mm. And is there, is there one song on this album that was particularly hard to finish? Uh, I mean, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say, there might be 11 oh. of them to be honest with you. But I think, you know, we were so, fo- we were so like in this record. It was, it was just so unbelievably involving for, for, you know, for re- there was no distractions, but also it just it just required it from us this time. You know, it required us to really dig deep, and uh, so it was hard to ever po- at any point be like, "Is this finished?" You know, and, you know, people were sending around demos that were so good at in the beginning. You remember that feeling you have, and you find it hard to let go of something. At least I do. I find it hard to let go of something until I hear back and feel the same. Like I want. The first time you hear last, we heard last man. I know we all had an all, all lipstick from you know when they sent them over. I know how impressed I was and how I felt, and I want to hear that again, but in this new recording. Yeah. So you're just forever chasing that. But it's always there's always that thing, isn't it? Like you can tweak fucking hi hat sounds for like years and never be happy. You know, you have to, at some point you just got to let go. <laughs> I think the phrase "done is better than perfect" is something that you have to live by to an extent, right? Uh, you know, I've never heard that before. Done is better than perfect. Yeah. God, I might have to get that tattooed on my forehead for the next album, actually. <laughs> so it's it's been, I think, three years since you guys won the Mercury Prize in the UK. So a belated congratulations on that. I was wondering if that really changed anything for you or if it, if it was just a moment in time or if it had any effect on how the band continued after that. I mean, it's been part of the roller coaster for me. Do you know what I mean? Like... I think it depends who you talk to when it comes to awards, whether, you know, there's people like The Weekends that will boycott the Grammys for not being nominated. But like for then another artist, it wouldn't be, it's just the icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. I grew up, I personally grew up really, I've always had a deep respect for the Mercury Music Prize because I think it is a music, it's a music thing, isn't it? It's not about image and stuff like this. It's musicians picking musicians. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a romance towards that. And it was just the, it's just the craziest thing. I still pinch myself. I think we all still pinch ourselves, don't we really? Like with that one. And it's, um, you know, I won't lie. Like when we're making a record, I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if, but you just don't, it just seems so out of, it's too fantastical to ever happen. And the fact that it did, I think, yeah, it, um, yeah, it was amazing. And when's the last time you know? played in front of an, a proper audience? Awesome party, wasn't it? It was the last thing I think, you know, which isn't promo, but an actual gig was the um, mm-hmm. Emily and Michael do an amazing event for the people of Glastonbury after at Glastonbury, almost as like, I imagine a thank you and also maybe a sorry. <laughs> and uh, we've done it twice now. And that was the last time we played. We did it with Supergrass. Do you know what? I, I bought a ticket for that show. No way. Oh, no I, way. I was in the UK. I was in Birmingham. And yeah. I, I'm a photographer. I had a shoot, and I did look at your thing in the background. I wondered, yeah. And I was, and I heard about the gig, and I think it was the first time Supergrass had played since they got back together, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And I was like, I'm definitely going to go. It was like a three hour trip. So I bought the ticket and I just realized there was no way that I was going to get there in time. Um, yeah. Oh, no. So I did buy a ticket for you guys. So I have some of it oh. in your pocket, but I didn't actually make it to the show. I'd like well, to say that, that I'd like to say that Supergrass weren't any good, but they were fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, they mate. were so good. Yeah, I'm. A, I, I think me and Josh both like share a love for Supergrass, mm. and uh, that band. was just very a very strange day having Supergrass on before us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, quite, sorry, mate. They're quite recognisable characters as well, aren't they? Like they they're almost like cartoon Britpop characters. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's incredible. And the set is just a barrage of hits. Mm. It's like you just single, forget like, how many great tunes they have. In it. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. they're just it's one after the other, yeah. I actually I did get to see you when you played Montreal though. So um when you Were played you there? Astral, I was there. I was taking pictures actually. Okay. Um, and that was a great show. Um, but that was the first time that I'd actually got to see you see you live congratulations on this new record i really feel like it's a big uh, step for you guys and i'm sure the world is just ready for it and ready to catch you live as well and thanks, thanks steve thanks for taking some time to chat with us and hopefully we'll have a beer when you get over to montreal or if i go back to england or something or a curry or a curry yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Indiana> beer. Yeah. <laughs> maybe after the show yeah <laughs>